know that in general, we believe computer-based testing will offer quite a number of benefits. The first one is actually the operational flexibility because by having a computer-based setting, it will actually enable quicker and more reliable adjusting landscape. Computer-based testing is also going to be more convenient and also socially distant. And we are able to actually increase the exam window and as well as the frequencies during the year. So compared with paper-based testing, computer-based testings will increase the number of exam administrations for every window and therefore providing candidates with more flexibility in terms of multi-days to take the particular exam. This will also enable us to actually increase a broader footprint of test areas. Last but not least, a fully digital format of computer-based testing is actually aligning to the real world professional environments. And therefore this will allow us better to model the tasks and also the problems that candidates are actually facing in their day-to-day -day work. And right now, globally, we're having a COVID-19 pandemic issue. And from the health perspective, most computer-based test centers are actually catered to actually for a safer environment because we'll be able to host a smaller number of candidates at the same time. And these computer-based testing centers are actually brick and mortar centers and they are physically located globally. The most important thing about it is that we're able to hire proctors as employees and equip them with pandemic safeguards. In terms of all CBT test centers, they will be actually administered for a shorter exam. The new testing time and also the um, administration time together will be five and a half hours. Compared with during the paper-based era, it will be nine hours. They are more operate, op they can be operated locally and modified for uh, the local um, operations and pandemic restrictions. And therefore it will better allow us to enforce pandemic social distancing requirements more effectively. Compared with the paper-based testing, the, com um, the computer-based testing will be offered in certain exam windows and each exam window will be up to 10 day period. Within an exam window, candidates will be allowed to actually reschedule and change the, the location or maybe the appointment time with a fee of 25 US dollars. And with computer-based testing, we are increasing our footprint and locations. In addition to the 192 global locations we offer for our paper-based exam, the exam center will also be offered to more than 400 locations globally. It will be a shorter exam period from three hours each section to 2.25 hours per session. What is going to be unchanged is actually the exam format. For all three levels, we are not changing the testing item types. So for level one, it will continue to be multiple choice. For level two, it will be item sets. And for level three, it will be item sets and essay. Having said that, it seems like there are a lot of upcoming changes, but a couple of things are certainly not going to change. We're going to uphold the rigor of the exam. That really means that a shorter exam is not going to translate it into an easier exam. A few years ago, we invested an independent psychometric research body to do some studies for us. And we believe that with four and a half hours of testing time, we will have enough and sufficient data for us to determine a candidate pass or fail reliably. So the incremental one and a half hours of additional testing time is going to be negligible. The passing score calculations and also the standards we are going to evaluate if a candidate pass or not will also remain unchanged. And another thing that is important to candidates is that in 2021, the curriculum will also remain unchanged, i.e. the same as the 2020 curriculum. Here is the 2021 exam schedule. Level one will be offered four times a year in February, May, August, and November. Level two and three will be offered twice a year with level two going to be offered in May and August 
and level three will be offered in May and September. In 2022, the frequencies are also going to be uh, the same. Um, the only difference is actually when the exams will be offered. Level one remains unchanged four times a year, and level two will be offered in February and August. Level three will be offered in May and November. I understand that some grant candidates are interested in terms of actually the mapping and also the footprint of taking computer-based testing. Our policy is that candidates will not be permitted to test in adjacent and windows. That means candidates will actually wait for six months in order to take the next level or repeat the current level. For example, if I take level one in February, I pass, I will not be able to take level two until August, not in May. The reason why is because we have some post-exam procedures to be performed and such as standard setting and also the passing percentage to be calculated. And therefore having six months in between will allow sufficient time for us. We also plan and schedule the sign up window as well to make sure that when a candidate in this case get the results for the February exam, he or she will be able to actually sign up the level two exam in August. Talking about registration and scheduling, one thing I would like to highlight is that the registration and also the scheduling are two separate processes. Candidates need to register first and then to schedule the exam appointment. To register for an exam, please sign in into your account and complete the registration process. So that means you need to select the appropriate exam cycle. For example, are you taking level one, level two, or level three? You request, uh, the requested information needs to be provided and also complete the payment process. Here, you are going to actually choose which particular administration you're going to take the exam. For example, I would like to choose to take level two in May, 2021. Then the next thing is actually to schedule your exam appointment. And here's how you're going to do it. First, you log into your CFA Institute account. Then you select whether it is CFA program or CIPM program. In this case being CFA program. Then you proceed past initial scheduling two pages. And then you search the desired address, the city, i.e. the location where you would like to take the test for level two in May, 2021. And then you select the date range from which date to which date you would like to search for availabilities. I encourage you to select a wide date range, not limiting the date range to just a few days. Here's an example of the test center search result. In this case, I searched for a test center that will be available in the last two weeks of May for Mumbai. And the result is going to show the, in two different ways. You can sort by the distance, choosing the closest test center to the location where you search. Another way is to actually sort by the first appointment available. Computer-based testing, testing exam experience. The exams will be delivered in proctored exam centers with very robust security measures in place. That means each test center will be closely monitoring candidates for any cheating. There will be proctors over there to actually monitor cheating, uh, any cheating behaviors. Candidates will be provided with writing materials to use during the testing periods. You will be allowed to take a calculator to the exam center. The authorized calculators remain unchanged. They are Texas Instrument BA2 Plus or HP12C. The exam appointment time will include time allotted to the candidate pledge tutorial and also the survey. Two, and, two hours and 25 minutes for the very first testing session, session one. There will be an optional 30 minute break, and then it will be scheduled for the second testing session being two hours and tw uh, uh, 25 uh, minutes. 
check-in process. Candidates should arrive at the test center 30 minutes prior to the appointment time. The proctor will greet and meet the candidate and direct candidate to the store personal belongings. The proctor will reveal the ID, which remains unchanged, and that is an international travel passport. The candidate will be provided paper and also the writing with pencil. And also the approved calculator that I just mentioned. The proctor will escort the candidate to the assigned computer to initiate the exam. So this is what's going to happen inside the testing room. First, acknowledge the candidate pledge, and then candidates will be offered a tutorial. Then the time portion of the exam is going to begin. Submit the answers at the end of the first section, and the break being 30 minutes is optional. The second time portion of the sec, uh, exam will begin. And after that, candidates will submit the answers. And then candidates will be presented with a survey about the experience. Then the exam is complete. We have included an exam software tutorial in our CFA Institute landing page on Prometrics website for a candidate resource dashboard so that you can actually get yourself a familiar about what is the format of the exam going to look like in this particular software. In addition, we also offer you some guidance in terms of what is the general overview of what to expect on the exam day. Here is how it's going to look like. You can search for the location in this landing page. You know what to do to prepare for the test day, what to expect, and also there's a tutorial showing you how to use the software in terms of answering the questions. Next, I would like to go over the exams. The curriculum is going to remain unchanged for 2021. The main reason behind it is because we understand that some candidates originally signed up for June 2020 exam. Then because of the deferral, they signed up for the December 2020 exam as well. In certain locations, we can't really hold a physical last paper-based exam that happened actually yesterday or the day before. We understand the, the burden and also the stress on candidates. And therefore, we would like to keep the curriculum next year to be the same in order to actually lessen this burden and also the stress from adding new materials to the test. I'm sure it's not familiar to most of you. This is something that is actually a modern digital platform for candidates to actually study and prepare for the exam. It increases the accessibility of our program globally with a modern candidate learning experience. So I actually give you an, an idea in terms of the dashboard when you sign in. The learning ecosystem is able to show you the progress in terms of your studying. And at the same time, you can actually take the flashcards so that you can remember some of the terms. You can do some practice problems. And there are also some mock exams included in the learning ecosystem as well. And in this uh, learning ecosystem, we actually have three mock exams for candidates for level one, two mock exams for level two, and one mock exam for level three for you to practice. The exams, as I mentioned briefly, all three levels of the exam question format will remain the same. So multiple choice questions for level one. Um, for levels two and three, there will be item sets, which is actually making up of a vignette, followed by four to six question, uh, multiple choice questions. Last year, we actually introduced four question item sets, and we are going to continue this year. And level three will also have essay questions. For level two and three, the vignette is going to be followed by either four or six multiple choice questions. We're going to keep the number of points offered for each multiple choice questions the same. Therefore, in terms of a four question item set, it's going to actually give you the score two thirds of a six question item set. For essay questions, a very common question from candidates is that 
what is the number of points being offered for each essay question? The essay questions actually have varying um, time for candidates to take it, and this will be indicated, which reflects the complexity. As a result, it actually varies by length of the exam question. A very common question as well from candidates is that for essay, sometimes there will be calculations involved. So how am I going to actually type or write a formula? Actually, in order for you to actually get the score for calculation questions in essay, if you actually give the very correct numerical answer, you're going to get the full credit for it. Having said that, I understand you would like to actually show the working so that you may be considered for actually partial credit and therefore you would like to type the formula. In the software, there will be a, a formula editor function that you will be able to type in the formula for calculation. Alternatively, in the box of the designated area, you can put in words to explain the steps being involved and therefore to show your analysis and calculations. In this case, your working will be shown or your formula will be shown. And as a result, these may be considered for partial credit for essay questions. In terms of the exam results availability, in the meantime for 2021 exam, they are going to continue and remain unchanged. For level one, it will take 60 days in order to get the result. And it is going to be the same for level two. And for level three, it will take 90 days to get the exam result. We have already budgeted this time period to ensure that when candidates get the level one result, for example, he or she will be actually able to sign up and register for the next upcoming exam window for the next level. Based on our survey to successful candidates, we understand that candidates who are successful have to pass the exam on average take more than 300 hours for the exam. One thing I would like to actually um, continue on this slide is that some candidates ask the exam, uh, ask a question about levels two and three um, uh, item set and essay. We understand that there's actually a vignette and also some uh, um, questions to follow. In the exam software, there will be actually two panes, the left and the right. The left pan pane is going to show the vignette in which you'll be able to actually scroll down and read the pages. And on the right pane, you'll be able to scroll the question. So therefore you can actually keep your left pane to see the vignette or the story while you're working on the questions that actually follow the vignette. The exam topic weights are going to uh, remain unchanged for the computer-based testing compared with paper-based. So for all three levels, there are actually 10 different topics and they actually show different percentages and they vary by actually the level of the exam. Um, one thing that is being um, core is actually the ethics and professional standards. As you can see that it actually remains for all three levels. Exam results. So I just showed you, I just showed you in terms of the period of time, 60 to 90 days to actually get the exam results. Um, I also emphasize to you that we're not going to make the exam easier by getting the computer-based exam. That means that the process for standard setting and for us to actually analyze candidate results and behavior to come up with the minimum passing score and therefore the passing percentage are, go are not going to change. Upkeeping the quality and the rigor of the exam is actually paramount to our gold standard. There are many different candidate resources available to you in terms of studying, preparation, and the exam. For studying, we have the learning ecosystem, which I introduced to you. There's also the downloadable curriculum and also the print version of the curriculum if you would like to purchase. 
To prepare for the exam, planning, practice, and preparation are very important. So with the learning ecosystem, you can study the sessions online. There are learning outcome statements for you to actually understand what is important to handle and master before the exam. For the exam itself, um, in terms of how to register and schedule the exam, we have a landing page to actually get candidates to understand more. In terms of the exam calendar, it's also something being posted. If you have additional questions, I will encourage you to send your question by email to info at cfainstitute.org, which is actually our global contact center. In addition, there are a couple of websites I would like to introduce to you. The first one being CFA Institute's enterprise website, which contains a page about exam updates, about computer-based testing, as well as test center updates. So therefore, it is important for us to understand that your email address on our file is accurate. December exam deferral options. Um, test center closures are actually something in which we have to implement inevitably, especially during the December exam lately. There are actually four elements for us to make sure that um, a physical exam can be held safely and securely. The first one is about a physical premise. We must make sure that we have a secure physical premise for the paper-based exam to take place. And because there will be a lot of uh, working personnel such as proctors, exam supervisors to host the exam, this is important and must be a prerequisite. At the same time, we also need to ensure that exam materials, like the books, scantrons, et cetera, can be shipped to the site and sent back securely. Last but not least, we must make sure that we actually stick to the um, restrictions and also rules and regulations imposed by local government for us to actually host a physical exam. I understand that some of you are actually twice impacted. That means you can't take the exam in June 2020 as well as in December 2020. So for those of you who are actually deferred twice inevitably, you can claim a full refund or you may actually select and be deferred to one of the four CBT testing windows in 2021. For level two and three candidates, if you have been impacted twice, same thing, you can choose a full refund or deferral to one of the two windows for CBT in 2021. One thing that is important for me to highlight is actually the upcoming December 14th deadline. If you are registered for February 2021 and have not scheduled your exam appointment, we encourage you to schedule before the 14th deadline. This is because after 14th of December, no appointments can be scheduled for February. We are also increasing the additional appointments in most added area. If you are not able to schedule an appointment for February due to limited capacity limits, you'll be eligible to sit for the exam in March 2021 at no additional cost. We are going to actually broadcast more information about the new March window and also the July window that is going to be offered pretty soon. And stay tuned for more information at our enterprise website and we are going to show you more details specifically about March, July, and also in terms of what are the other windows being offered for our different levels of the exam. So I'm happy to take your, your questions and answer the best I can. Thank you so much, Grace, for taking us through an informative presentation. I have questions pouring in. So I'll address, I'll take them up one at a time and address it to you. There's a question from Abu sure. Safar. He asks, if during the exam, candidate uh, computer disc is, gets disconnected or there is an internet issue, then would the candidate be compensated for the time lost due to an incident during the exam? 
Very good question. Actually, when there's actually a hiccup during the computer time, the actually um, say, let's say because of power failure, candidate can still actually continue at the exam because the candidate is actually working on a local copy on that particular computer. So let's say if, that's, if this is actually a disruption that is going to take more than 30 minutes, the proctor will actually accompany the candidate and the candidate will be offered two options. Continue to wait until the disruption is being resolved or the candidate may actually take the exam again within the same administration or the window. Having said that, let's say if I'm a level two candidate and this is now May 2021 when I am taking the exam, I decide to actually not continue waiting after 30 minutes. Then I come back, let's say two days later to take the exam. The exam that I'm going to get is not something that I will continue from the point where I was disrupted, but rather is going to actually be something that I will start from the very beginning to work on question one again. So Abu, the answer is yes, you're going to be compensated for your lost time. Thank you so much, Grace. There is a question on weightages per subject for the computer-based testing exams in 2021. I think it was answered in one of your slides where you exhibited the weightages per area. Is that different yes. from what it was in paper-based testing or does it remain the same? It remains the same. The weights and also the topics are actually unchanged. The information can be um, actually seen and it is available in CFA Institute's website. Thank you, Grace. There's a follow-up question similar to that from Mr. Ramchandra Agarwal. Uh, he asked whether the number of questions reduce in computer-based testing. I think that's been answered as well, but I would request you to re reiterate. Sure. Um, for each um, question, the um, average time is remaining unchanged. So for example, in level one, it's actually going to be still one and a half minutes. And then for level two in the item set, each question is still going to be three minutes. Therefore, for level one, for example, you're actually going to get fewer questions in proportion. And for the essay question, because it's actually have, having different complexities for each essay question, therefore the weight because of the time allocated is actually going to be different. remains the same. So since the number of time allocated changes, that will change either. Uh, there's a question again, whether uh, whether there will be a dynamic difficulty of questions offered, as in, and I think the question means if the questions will change according to the dynamic difficulty process. So my understanding is that this is actually continue to be just like paper-based exam. That really means that the points and hence the difficulty rewarded will actually remain just like in paper-based exam. Therefore, what does that mean is, yeah, what does that mean is that we actually have a, um, a range in terms of um, complexities and difficulties, even for level one exam. But having said that, each question is being one and a half minutes. And therefore, my advice to you is that if you find this question being more difficult, don't overspend the amount of time on it. Each question has the same weight and has the same number of points. And that is worth one and a half minutes of your testing time. Okay. Thank you, Grace. There are a lot of questions on uh the scheduling process as well as the exam experience. Let me take those up on the exam experience in the first place. Uh, the questions being asked here is, can you please provide us more details on what can be carried for the exam? Uh, are writing materials allowed to be carried during the exam? 
what other items are allowed and also there's a question again on calculators whether candidates can carry more than one calculator during the exam sure um candidates can actually bring two calculators just like paper-based exam and um in terms of the writing materials candidates will actually be provided like um something to write on and my understanding is that there will be two pages, two faces to it, and also a pen to write on it as well. Um, if you would actually like to get more pages or more space to do your rough work, you will be able to actually erase your work on these two sides and therefore continue to actually write more. Brilliant. So Rabia has a follow-up question which might help. Uh, she wants to know, I would like to know whether we can go back to previous question and answers after answering and moving forward. Will we be, have the option to revise and go through our answers or change our answers later? Absolutely. Now, one thing I would like to talk a little bit more is that there will be two timed portion for the exam. In the very first timed portion of the exam, that is before the break, you'll be able to jump around, let's say from question 60 and then back to question 30 and then go to question 90 like that. The software actually allows you to take a burst eye view in terms of what questions have been attempted and which question you actually flag to, re to revisit later. You can actually flag a question if you want to go back later. The software also allows you to actually highlight key buzzwords for example, in item set and essay questions, you want to underline, for example, um, some important information. You can do that and highlight in the software. For example, in multiple choice questions, I understand that some candidates would like to do it by elimination. You can also strike out some answer choices as well that you believe are unlikely. However, if you are in the second timed portion of the exam, which is actually after the break, you cannot go back to the very first testing session. Therefore, make sure that you remain in the same testing session, you feel comfortable, and then you do the submission. If you are in the second timed portion of the exam, which is after the break, you cannot go back to the very first testing session. Yeah. Uh, that follows up another question from Yashika who asks, uh, for level one, how will the subjects be tested? Is it in a sequential order or are questions mixed? I think the question is whether the questions would follow an order in terms of subject area or would they be mixed questions from across subject areas for level one? That is a very good question. Um, as you can see that actually we have a couple of different um, topics in our exam curriculum materials. In the first section, you will be offered questions from ethics, accounting, economics, and also quantitative studies. So these are investment tools. And then in the second section, which is after the break, you will be tested portfolio management, corporate finance, equity, fixed income, derivatives, and alternative investments. So we put some questions of certain topics before the break and some after the break. Yeah. Uh, a lot of questions on uh, uh, during the exam. Again, I think it's a repetition of what you say, whether the rough work can be done on a piece of paper or it would all be on the screen. If you could please reiterate that, Grace. Sure. The rough work is actually something you can do it on actually uh, some materials that we will provide you, which is actually um, like um, a board or something like that with two pages. You can actually write on it. You can actually um, use a pen being provided to you at the test center that you can write on this board to do your rough work. And that means you're not going to type your rough work on the machine itself. If you need more space, more than the two pages, what you can do is actually, you can actually use a piece of tissue paper, erase it 
to make some space available and continue to do the rough work. Okay. Another question following that is about starting a module and leaving it halfway. If, a, if somebody starts a module, say the ethics module, and leaves it halfway, can they come back to it later? Yes, if it is actually within the same testing session. So using level one as an example, ethics will be offered in testing session number one. So therefore within this testing session, you can actually go back and do the ethics questions again. Thank you, Grace. Uh, questions on the break that's there, the 30 minute break. Is it an optional break? And if one finishes uh, the AM session, can one proceed to the PM session without taking the break at all? You can do that. The break being 30 minutes is optional. So you may choose not to take a break. You may choose to proceed directly into the second session after you finish the first session. Or you can choose to take only 15 minutes for the break. For example, to get some water to drink or go to the toilet. Brilliant. A lot of questions on scheduling, if we can take them up now. Uh, for questions on whether one can, when uh, some people are having difficulties uh, scheduling their exam for February. Uh, they have questions on till when they can schedule exams and what would be the process. And uh, if they, there are issues or challenges due to a pandemic situation that they are not able to take the exam in February after registering for it, what options do they have? I think one thing we all have learned from the pandemic is that there are many uncertainties which I do appreciate your perseverance and also your agility for it. So in terms of scheduling, I understand in India, there are quite a number of locations reaching the February capacity already. We are actually going to offer new exam administration windows that's going to be in March that will be available. And hopefully we'll be able to cater some of the candidates who are deferred in December, as well as not able to schedule, but registered for February to make use of this window. My understanding is that more information will come this week. And therefore, please go to our website to understand the new window, which level will be offered, and what are the different options. Okay. There are questions on changing uh, exam dates from say February to May. If somebody is already registered for the February exam, would they be able to reschedule to an exam in May or August? Yes, you may. But one thing to remind you is that in this case, because the rescheduling is not within the same administration or window, therefore you need to pay for actually the new registration fee which is 700 to 1,000 US dollars. The US $25 of the rescheduling fee applies only within the same window. That means I'm changing the date from May, from let's say the first week to the second week of May. The 25 US dollars do not apply to change the exam administration, for example, from May to August. Uh, there are questions. Thank you, Grace. So just to reiterate that the $25 fee is uh, for rescheduling is applicable only if you reschedule within an exam window. That is, you reschedule your May exam in May itself, not if you reschedule from May to August or February. If one reschedules from February to another exam window, that is May or July, then one has to pay a much higher fees, which is 700 or 1,000 US dollars. Right, Grace? Yes, thank you thank so you, much Aarti. for the clarity. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you, Grace. Uh, questions again around scheduling. Uh, if uh, one is not able to get a particular exam, a free window, exam testing window, or seating in February, what are the options available to candidates who have registered for February? Good question. Um, we are trying our best to actually add capacity to the local markets. 
but if the capacity is really limited for February for level one, we will contact the candidates about it and offer different options. So therefore, please stay tuned for our email if this is the case. And as I just recently mentioned, we are actually going to increase the administrations or the window. March will be offered and July will be offered. And March will basically be offered to all level one candidates if they are actually deferred in December, as well as they register for February, but because of seating limit capacity. And therefore, this information is going to be more in more details and made available to you at our enterprise website later this week. I will encourage you to actually check later this week for more information about what are the options, what are the new windows, and for each new window, what level of the exams will be offered to candidates. And therefore, please check later this week at our institute's website. Uh, one more question for from twice deferred candidates. If they have already registered for February 21, uh, are there, there are different rules for them to if they would like to defer further to May or change their exam from February to May? Or is it the same rules as we mentioned earlier? If the, actually the deferral is caused by, let's say, local restrictions, or maybe due to, for example, um, pandemic situation, we understand that this is actually inevitable and not controlled by candidates. We will contact you timely and offer you the option. And if it is actually for February due to seat limits capacity, we are also going to contact you in terms of the different options available. One option being available to you is actually the newly added exam window, which is March as well as July. So hopefully you will be able to schedule your appointment in March or July. Okay. There's a question on March, whether the deadline for registration for the March window would be before 14 December or after 14 December? What we would be actually, the deadline for registration for the March window? Stay tuned until later this week to take a look at that. Just want to make sure that this information is actually made available to all candidates impacted globally. And this is going to come out in 48 hours. Uh, let me take some questions regarding the exam pass percentage. There are a few questions on how we determine pass percentages and how if whether it's going to be different. You've already stressed on the fact that the standard setting process remains the same. Uh, could you please throw more light on the standard setting process itself and how the minimum pass percentage is uh, arrived at at CFA Institute for CFA program exams? Sure. Um, we are actually following the best practices that most high stake exams are currently taking in terms of cutting the pass score and hence the passing rate. This is a process called the standard setting in which we actually involve a number of charter holders with actually different background, for example, academia and professional fields for them to actually advise us in terms of what are actually some of the core competencies the candidates should be able to reflect in the exam questions. Then based on this analysis result, and because this is definitely dependent on the pool of candidates taking for each window, we staff are going to actually take a look at the results, review them, and therefore recommend what is the appropriate minimum passing score or the cut score. And then we're going to actually have our recommendation being provided to the Board of Governors. The Board of Governors are going to actually make a decision in terms of this particular passing rate. Because this is definitely a reflection of the candidates in the pool who actually take the exam. Therefore, this particular passing rate will make change from time to time from administration or window to another. However, this whole process will remain rigorous and we actually will keep it unchanged going forward in computer testing. 
Thank you, Grace. Uh, there are a few questions on mock exams that I would request you to answer. Uh, there are uh, there are questions on whether mock exams available on the learning ecosystem would provide sufficient experience of the exam environment and how it would be. Uh, and more uh, feed the questions on where they can get an experience of the exam environment and exactly how the experience would be. Very good question. The mock exams materials are reflective of what candidates will expect on the live exam day. So therefore make good use of the mock exams to actually test if you're actually ready and are able to actually master the materials. In terms of the exam experience at the particular proctored test center, please visit our website, the Prometric Landing website, which contains a tutorial of the software. And that is going to show you that particular software that you will use on the exam day. For example, how to strike out some options in multiple choice questions, how to scroll the vignettes for item set and essay, how to highlight the first eye view or the summary page to show you which questions are actually not attempted which questions you have flagged for yourself to revisit later like that. Therefore, I would encourage you to do both, do the mock exams, as well as visiting this particular tutorial about the software. Okay. Uh, some questions I'd like to take, especially on uh, how far scheduling, I mean, scheduling exams again, is how far into the future can I schedule the exam? Can I go beyond August? And if one fails an exam, what is the earliest one can take, or earliest attempt that one can take the exam again? I believe that we actually have the November exam for actually level one and also level three being available. So therefore, um, please actually take a look at our website in terms of the specific registration and scheduling deadline for both of them. I'm sorry, I don't have the information imme immediately available to me now. Um, in terms of, I'm sorry, Arti, what's the second question again? Uh, the question is about uh, how quickly can one take the next exam if one fails a particular exam? And also there are questions on, there is, seems to be a 60 day gap for uh, during which for results to be declared. So can somebody register for the next level before the results are declared for the previous level? That's very clever. <laughs> um, it is our policy to actually have candidates to wait six months to take the next level of the exam or to repeat. So to answer your question, I'm sorry to tell you that you cannot register for the next level before you actually get the result for your current level. For example, if I actually take the May 2020, I'm sorry, 2021 level two exam, I won't be able to take the level three exam actually until, um, until November, that's right. That will be after six months of 2020. And let's say if I actually fail the May 2021 exam, I won't be able to take the immediate available next particular window, which is August. I will have to wait until next year, 2022, to take the level two exam to repeat. Again, wait for six months before you take the exam, the next window, be it a new level or the next level, or be it a repeat, six months waiting time. And a follow-up question to that, is the difficulty levels going to change by exam setting? So if you take an exam in February, would it be easier than the one in May or July? We're actually keeping the quality of the exam very consistent. And by quality, one important element is of course the difficulty and also the scope of the exam. And therefore, as a candidate, I would expect the February exam to be about the same difficulty as our May or maybe our August or, and also the November exam. We won't make a particular window of the exam easier than the other one. 
Thank you so much, Grace. We're running out of time. So I'll just have one question asked on the exam defer twice deferred candidates and exam fee refund or rescheduling. Could you please again uh, reiterate the, what is the process for candidates who have been deferred twice to seek a refund or what are their options available in terms of registering for the next exam? Thank you. Um, in terms of twice deferred candidates, that means these are candidates in which they actually signed up for June 2020 and December 2020, but their local market situation doesn't allow the PDT paper-based exam to be offered. So only twice deferred candidates can be offered a refund. The refund will actually start today, December 7th, until December 21st. So essentially log into your account and therefore actually request for a refund. And in terms of the upcoming deadline for um, December 14th, this is for candidates. If you are registered for February 2021, but you have not scheduled your exam appointment. And um, in terms of the options that are actually available to twice deferred candidates is that you can actually register for any of the 2021 exam windows. So currently February is closed. That means you can register for May, for August, and also for November. Thank you so much, Grace, for patiently answering all the questions. There are still quite a few questions and my apologies to the participant attendees that, that if we have not been able to address some of your questions. You still have, might have specific questions on specific individual issues or challenges with respect to especially deferral fees, et cetera. I would request you to please contact CFA Institute's Global Contact Center at info at cfainstitute.org or call our toll-free numbers as listed on our website for answers to those specific individual challenges. Uh, we, if you have missed any part of this webinar or would like to go through this presentation, uh, then on the, in the chat box now, we have had uh, the link to download the presentation listed. This entire webinar will be hosted on the YouTube site of CFA Society India in a few days, and you can access that. Please feel free to revisit the webinar and to share it with fellow candidates and people who have missed this. We will be emailing a link to the presentation once it's on the YouTube site to all those who have registered for this webinar. Uh, thank you very much for patient listening, for joining the webinar, and Grace, thank you so much for your time and for patiently taking us through all the questions. I hope this has been useful. We look forward to seeing you all, meeting you all again. Best wishes for your examinations and future. Thank you, everyone, and thank you, CFA Society India, for helping us to host this session. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Aarti and team. I really enjoyed talking to all of you. Stay safe and healthy. All the best.